But if I do not come through with said promises, I will dye my hair. Dye my hair. My hair. My hair. I'm just gonna figure out how Welcome to Welcome to David's Ratchet Salon. Mom, we have two camera angles. Here and here. Try not to be in either one. It's late, she doesn't want to be seen. Whatever. You are not saying that. <laughs> yeah, I just did. Okay, we're just gonna wing this, guys. You not? You don't want to use these? Yes, I'm winning. You oh. want me to have blue hands tomorrow? Well, that's why I gave it to you. What is this for? If I cut this, will it work? Wait a minute! Don't... I'm just gonna... No, cut... No! Oh my god, just go! It's gonna get my eyes. Oh, it's cold. <gasps> not supposed to go on your scalp. Well, you just rubbed it right on there, so... Wait, maybe I should put it on my hand first. It's not a massage. It's hair dye. Directly on my forehead. You should have got fluorescent. I'm not trying to look like neon, just sort of laser. This is what you do when you don't have a real job and no real obligations outside of your house, so you just do what you want. <laughs> I'm known to many as having a Brillo pad for hair because it is rather thick. You know, there's nobody else that would not go to bed on my bedtime to do this for. Oh, how sweet. And now we wait. So, yeah, um, this is the result. I don't think it looks blue whatsoever. I think it just looks maybe slightly darker. You can actually see where it like dyed my skin right there, but it's not even in the hair. What the heck? That box said, for brown hair, no bleach needed. Um, I thought it'd be nice, like a subtle blue tinge or something. Uh, I don't think it worked at all, personally. Let me know what you guys think, though. Also, why is my nose so red? I look like I got sunburned, and it's been like 40 degrees. <laughs> But what is going on peeps? Welcome back to this week's brand new video. Now today I am bringing you something slightly different from anything I've ever done before. Now I've put Tasty's recipes up against each other. I've put stuff that I found on Pinterest up against Buzzfeed, but I've never done anything from Gordon Ramsay and a ton of you guys recently have been suggesting that to me down in the comments. So I figured the best thing to do for this video was to go through one of Gordon Ramsay's channels and find a recipe somewhat similar to a recipe that I saw over on Tasty's channel. And because I've been doing a lot more desserts than anything recently on this channel. So today I'm gonna be putting up Gordon Ramsay's fast food crab and chili pasta versus Tasty's Baked Shrimp Linguini Scampi. Now, I know you're gonna say, well, one has crab, one has shrimp. It was hard to find similar things, okay? But they're both using a very similar pasta and they both have a very similar base to the sauce. So I think this will have some merit. Um, let's see how it goes. First up, we're gonna start with Tasty's Linguini recipe and the ingredients that they used were some shrimp, some white wine, salt and pepper, Linguini pasta, lemon, garlic, butter, red pepper flakes, and some fresh cilantro. Now I decided to first start by getting some of the prep work for this out of the way. Uh, I just basically took a couple cloves of garlic, smashed them, and minced them as small as I could get them. I also took six ounces of butter, which is about one and a half sticks in total, and melted that down in the microwave. This kind of seems like a lot. I don't know if it was a misprint or something, but we're just gonna see how it goes. Third, I grabbed my lemon and I gave it a good roll on my cutting board to release some of those juices, and then I cut it in half and juiced only one half while straining out all of the seeds. We're only gonna need about a tablespoon of that. And then finally, I took a bunch of my fresh cilantro and gave that a good chopping. I did a a little extra here because we're gonna need it for the next recipe as well. And now that that's all done, we can move on to our shrimp. In a ceramic or glass oven safe pan, throw in one pound of shrimp. Now my shrimp are a lot smaller than the ones Tasty used. I'm assuming it'll come out the same as long as you end up using one pound. You wanna take all of the shells off and the bottom piece. And since these were a little bit frozen still, I kind of let them thaw out as I was peeling them and then let all the water drain out in the sink. 
Now once those were all thawed out and peeled, I added my 6 ounces of melted butter, which seems like even more than it previously did. My minced up garlic, a tablespoon of salt, which wow, this seems like a lot too. I actually am going to do a little less than a tablespoon to save my heart. A tablespoon of black pepper, one tablespoon of the red chili flakes, one tablespoon of lemon juice, and then a half cup of white wine. Thoroughly toss all your shrimp so they all get a nice coating in the spices, and once you have done that, throw that into a 400 degree oven for just about 10 to 13 minutes. Now while those were in the oven, I moved over to my stove top. I had a boiling pot of water ready to go, and in that I added some sea salt, and eight ounces of linguine, which is about a half of a box, because most boxes come with one pound. I cooked those for a couple minutes and strained them out. Once those were done and the shrimp were done in the oven, we can combine them and plate this thing up. All you have to do is grab your shrimp out of the oven, throw in your strained out linguine, and toss all of the shrimp and the sauce together with the pasta. Finish that off with a sprinkling of your parsley. And then once you got that on a plate, we are ready to try this thing. Now is it just me, or is my plating getting slightly better, even though we've done this series for well over a year now, so I'm overdue. No, I've had my fair share of shrimp scampi in the past, so this is gonna have to live up to some expectations. That was a lot of pasta. <laughs> Now I know what some of you may be thinking out there, David, it's just spaghetti in pretty much straight butter, so how can it be bad? And I'd say to you, you're right. The shrimp is cooked really nicely though. I do have to say that thank God I did not add all of the salt that they called for because it is a little bit over salted. Like to be honest, the more I eat it, the more salty it gets. So I'm gonna stop now. But overall, that's a really solid pasta dish. So I will give it a 7.77 out of 10. My mouth is now saturated in that butter grease, but we have to continue on our second recipe. Next up on the menu today is Gordon Ramsay's crab and chili pasta from a segment in his show called The F Word. And I have to just add that I find it really ironic that in the title of this video, Gordon considers it fast food. I think to the majority of us, this would be considered like a very nice dinner, but hey, we are not Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> And again, I'm gonna begin by prepping up some of the ingredients for this. Now I started with my green chilies, which I believe are serrano peppers. I basically just removed the tops off of that, split them open, and then took out all of the seeds inside. I did that for a couple of my peppers, and then with a really sharp knife, I tried to cut them down into smaller diced pieces. This is going to replace the garlic that was present in Tasty's recipe. After that, I jumped back over to my stovetop where I had some more boiling water and then added in this basil flavored, excuse me, while I absolutely butcher the pronunciation of this, paparadelle, deli, something, let's just call it double wide linguine noodles for this, which is also fresh pasta. It is not dried out like the previous linguine that we used, so we only need it in the boiling water for about four to five minutes max. All you have to do now is remove that pasta from the water and strain it out and then crack open your can of crab meat or whatever type of crab meat that you're using for this and we can actually start throwing everything together. In a very hot pan over medium to high heat, first add in a few tablespoons of olive oil to coat the whole bottom and then a couple tablespoons of your diced up pepper. Give them a couple minutes to cook down for a bit, tossing them around the pan as they cook, at which point you can add in however much crab meat that you want in your pasta. I think I added in, I'd say, maybe a quarter to a third of a cup. Allow that to cook down for another three to four minutes, then add in the juice of half of a lemon, and then the rest of your fresh parsley. Once those ingredients have all married together, you can add in eight to nine ounces of your fresh pasta, making sure to toss all that good crab meat and juice throughout the pasta. And that's pretty much it. I just plated it up quick with some extra flakes of parsley and the crab over top, and this looks just as good as the last one. Now, the pasta itself had me very tempted to make one of those disgusting comparisons that I have become renowned for, but uh, I've refrained myself. I just thought I'd let you know on that little secret now. It definitely does look a lot better once it's cooked and in this form, so. Mm. 
Oh boy. The thing that pops out immediately in this is the lemon juice on the crab meat. It's like such a good combination and there's so much in it. I can't tell if the basil flavor in this pasta is making it better or worse. It's definitely really good. Uh, by the way, I couldn't find the plain type in the store. I had to go with this stuff. So if you were mad, there's your answer for that. I really like this. The peppers are so good in there too. Wow. I do wish there was slightly more um, juice or oil or something because the pasta has kind of sucked all of that up and it's slightly dry. But the second this video ends, I am finishing this thing. It is most definitely better than the last one. Sorry, Tasty. This is getting a 9.2 out of 10. I hope you guys enjoyed this slightly different version of a BuzzFeed test. If you did, let me know by hitting a like on this. Can we try to hit 6,000 maybe? I don't think we've hit that in a while, but we can do it now. Come on. If you do like this Ramsey versus Tasty series, let me know down in the comments. Let me know other Ramsey recipes that you want to see me try or put up against some tasty stuff. I really enjoyed this format. And other than that, I hope you guys have an absolutely awesome rest of your week. I'll probably see you back here either Sunday or Monday for a DIY test. I'm not sure which day yet. Either way, I will see